<laughs> Aloha, yes, <clears throat> here I am. I am be here in this moment and on the walk over here, contemplating or thinking and talking out loud of what I wanted to say on a video. I mean, there's so many different things I could focus on, but uh, one thing I've um, that is <clears throat> how to start this. What's the opening words you can say to bring this? Uh, deep topic the powers that be or wish they could remain in power holding the keys of their power they they hold these keys and realize how you maintain control <clears throat> is by this divide and conquer mechanism. It's uh, it's the old Masonic trick, black and white checkerboard. You must choose one side or the other, black or white. As long as you don't focus on the sh the gray in between, at which also contains the, all the colors of the rainbow spectrum in the middle and this is the key is that life is in the balance it's on the level life is both magnetic and electric now there's the black side the magnetic receptive feminine uh, well, but it's also represents, it's represented by the Saturn archetype. Um, the Saturn, old man Kronos and time, it's constriction and boundaries and, you know, it's the, the great malefic. And this is the black polarity, the polarity, the, its opposite polarity is the sun. Which is, the, you know, the king, the the one that shines bright, the savior of the day, it brings on the day, um, you know, and the warmth and life, it, it's the electric energy of the masculine side of this paradigm of this, uh, you know, the balance of life. So, you know, there, we need them both. You can't just have unfettered, you know, unconstrained electricity without uh, the you know the channels that it's directed through like your wires and you know these archetypes you can't have just this fire energy without also it, the container to contain it and you know to hold its <laughs> its power in the magnetic so this is where the key and this is where the the balance of our of, of us individually realizing our power is by being on the level with ourselves and balancing these two polarities and really uh, seeking to not get so caught up in emotional traumas which polarize, you know, to one side or another, anything that polarizes us off to, off kilter, or, you know, the, all these words and, and uh, statements that we use to, to describe this, all these things in, in our media systems of control, and, you know, I mean, the, the world is so full of all kind. I mean, just so much flood of information that has come at us nowadays with our technology. I mean, I'm here holding my cell phone. That's you know, just the portal to the internet, and you know, all this floods of information, and you know, it's almost replaced the library of books, which is a negative in a lot of ways. It's like reading from a book is is a lot more absorptive. It, you know, you can be a lot more absorbed and retain that information 
if it's written on real paper and ink. But even still, there's elements of fakery and, re, you know, uh, illusions. These, all these illusions that we hold, these beliefs that we have, you know, our sacred cows and our belief systems that we have to further polarize ourselves against them or, you know, it's us versus them. And, and very well, you know, our environment has been manipulated for thousands of years to perpetuate this division and conquering. And there's these many annoyances of our industrial society that is polluting polluting our, our sound, you know, our, our ears, polluting our air and our water and our food. It can be quite overwhelming. But if we can hold in remembrance in, in, our, in our minds this key that life is in the balance, you know, to stay focused, stay balanced, but not, not focused necessarily, like, I don't know, all these words, too, are uh, definitions, definitions, we are, running around like we think we know things, but we're bound by our language and theories that are formed by that language. And I'm, you know, I'm using these words here just right now to to bring these ideas and concepts. You know, they're necessary. We need these things, but we also need to dig deep, keep asking questions, and, and find resonance with our environment. This is a key word right there. Find resonance. You know, resonate in harmony with the environment and that doesn't mean conform to things that are toxic but you know resonate on a different frequency that uh, that um, what is the word I'm thinking of ameliorates or you know that's a big word but that the, the, the you know vibrate on a different and this whole new cage idea is vibrating at higher frequency well not necessarily higher but uh, harmonious and in tune and you know closer is the closer to nature and earth that we can vibrate which uh, you know supposedly is changing but you know it's hard to trust <clears throat> science and especially when you can't even really find solid evidence proof of, of it online anymore it's or you know how do you do your own test well it's not about knowing the numbers of the resonance frequency of su supposedly eight hertz but it's more about you know just being in resonance with the natural environment you come out to to spaces that are you know that are that have nature and just tune in find those places where you can tune in to nature I'm right here next to the Mississippi River it's foggy to right this morning which is quite nice it's cool <clears throat> but find your little space of joy and happiness here I have a little dog that helps me in a lot of ways come out and play and in perspective of the things that are that are most important continuing to work on my health and be you know be eating correctly to my anatomy and to my uh, frequency that my body is adapted to in this moment these things these these little things but profoundly important to find little pieces of this 
I mean, the earth is still here. These trees, I mean, even though it's just been decimated beyond recognition in a lot of areas, there are still plants, you know, like um, there's this meme that's just shout out to all the plants growing through concrete. You know, <laughs> that's a great metaphor right there. A shout out to all the plants growing through concrete. I mean, even if you live in the concrete jungle, take a look at all the little grass that's growing through the cracks in the concrete and, and just contemplate that for a minute. And, you know, continue to vibrate that frequency of harmoniousness with your environment. <laughs> That's like the most profound truth right there. I mean, it's just, what else is there? All these little, all these theories and ideas we come up with. Yes, you know, the earth is very well flat. Water lays flat. There's all these physics and, you know, there's just mountains of evidence that suggest that earth is flat. There is a horizontal plane. You know, I mean, I you know, I get off on this topic, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a little tangent. It's a, like a fun thing. It's an exercise for my mind. And it very well, you know, we're being lied to on so many levels. And the propaganda machine of the powers that wish they could remain are frantically seeking to maintain this, you know, polar, polarization. So at any rate, I'm just um, feeling, you know, deep and contemplative right now. The moon is in Pisces, as well as Mars, directly conjunct with Neptune in Pisces, which are both square to my natal Neptune. And so it's pretty deep and amazing right now, I'm feeling. Uh, Pisces is quite amazing. And, and this is another topic, astrology, a lot of people poo-poo it like it's, you know, uh, pseudoscience or whatever, but that's because they don't understand the language. It's like, you know, an, uh, an English speaker going to China or even Mexico or whatever and where they speak a different language and, you know, not able to communicate with the people there because blah, 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 espanol, no, no comprende, amigos, like, you don't understand the language. You can't very well communicate on that level with, with those who do understand it. So, you know, hold your judgments and your prejudice, uh, religionist people, because, you know, astrology has been used by virtually every culture. It, it has archetypes and explanations that virtually, that literally cover the entire spectrum of our creation and this is what I was saying the, the polarities the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere so called half sphere uh, the, the equator is, this, is the middle point where when you look at Polaris it's right on the horizon and then you look the uh, south and, and the, the other you know it's not actually a star you have to calculate where that point is but the southern part is on the horizon that's kind of the middle point of, of balance, the equator. And if so, anyway, um, damn, there was an important point. I was, uh, this balance. So the, the, the astrology, the sine wave, the top, the royal arch, you know, all these symbolisms and archetypes that the Masons have taken and, and, you know, we demonize them, which is very, you know, uh, appropriate in a lot of ways because they've, they've taken these keys of this balance perspective that I'm talking about here. They've taken these keys and made them secret and, and exclusive and hidden. You know, you have to join their club to, to access this stuff. And this is, this is uh, you know, whatever. I'm not getting off on that. But it, like, so the Royal Arch... This is the, the northern hemisphere's summertime, which starts in Aries and goes over into, you know, to Libra. And in the fall, uh, the cross, the, the, the 
<clears throat> there's, there's all this symbolism. It's pretty deep. The crossing point between Libra and Scorpio, when it when the sun crosses that point, it's crossing the you know the, the balance point, the equator, equinoxes, the equinox points, and then there's the solstice points at the top and the bottom. Can't uh, you know Cancer and Capricorn. <clears throat> so when the sun is going below that line, it's you know it's going into the underworld and the the dark magnetic. Capricorn rule or Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius you know this is the the polar opposite of the Sun which rules cancer or I mean uh, Leo right after cancer the m moon rules cancer <clears throat> so all these things have archetypes and symbolism for virtually every everything in our experience this physical realm would not be manifested without the polarity and without the balance between the polarity and the use of both you know there's there's the balance up and down plus positive negative charges or or fields of magnetics there's you know black and white all across the the realm is these examples and archetypes of left and right polarities but the power is in the middle and understanding that we need them both and standing in the middle and in balance on the level and you know using that to our advantage Aum Aho Matakwiasin. <laughs> Aloha. So much love.